Hello, it's Grandma Karen. Now that you've chosen the correct chair and table for sewing, we will look at all the different knobs and buttons on your sewing machine. For the first few lessons, you will see that there are several videos. The first one is a generic video covering all machines. The rest are for specific Bernina machines that my grandchildren have. The videos are meant for ages 10 and older and are meant to be done with a mentor, a grandparent, an aunt, a friend, a sibling. There is usually a mentor's note at the end of this video. In this video, we will be looking at the Bernina 802 Sport. This is the manual or guidebook for the machine. It has details about all the things I am showing you. If you have questions, check your guidebook. I will put large paper clips on the pages that are important. For example, this page labels the parts of your machine. If you do not have a manual, ask your local Bernina dealer if they can get one for you. There are also many manuals for older machines online. The downloads are often free or have a small cost. You can also print out the worksheet downloads listed under this video and draw on the label, draw on and label your machine. These are my attempt at labeling my machine. This is the power cord socket right here. You just plug, plug the power cord unit in here. The other end gets plugged into the wall. This is the foot control or it might be called the foot pedal. You will put the, your foot on this whole pedal to make the machine sew. It's kind of like a gas pedal on a car. You plug this other end of this into the foot control and then you put it onto the floor. If you have a small brother or sister, be sure to unplug your machine. If they push on the foot pedal, they may hurt themselves as the needle goes up and down. If you have a pet, they may burn out the motor if they sit on the pedal for too long. This machine does not have an on and off switch, so you must unplug it to turn it off. Remember to unplug it when you get up from your machine. This silver lever is the presser foot lifter. This is the presser foot. When you start to sew, you put the presser foot down to hold the fabric as it goes through the machine. When you get to the end of your sewing, you put the presser foot up. This presser foot lifter is how you put the presser foot up and down. This is the throat of your machine. You reach your right hand through the throat and then you can put the presser foot down and you can put the presser foot up. We're going to talk about the presser foot more in our next lesson. This right here is the presser foot clamping lever. It's smaller than the presser foot. It's how you put this presser foot on and off. We'll practice attaching and removing the presser foot in our next video. Under the presser foot are the feed dog. They look like little teeth. Your machine calls these two things real holder pins. I will call them the more modern term spool pin. This is where you put your thread. And this right here is the rear, rear thread guide. It's uh, part of threading your machine. We'll talk about it later. This is the slide on table stud. There is one on the front of the machine also. Your machine may come with a little table that slides on into place onto this stud. My machine does not have a table. Your manual has instructions for attaching the slide on table if you have one. Now let's look at this right side of the machine. This is the hand wheel. It's part of the system that makes the needle go up and down and makes the threads form stitches. When you press the foot control, it will spin around. It goes really fast, so try to keep your hands away from it when it's moving. Sometimes you will move the hand wheel with your hands instead of with the foot control. When you turn the hand wheel with your hands, you need to turn the top of the wheel towards you, not away from you. The needle will go up and down if you turn it away from you, but it won't make a stitch. We'll talk about the reverse button in a later video if you need to sew backwards. This smaller wheel inside the hand wheel is the hand wheel release, release knob. I'm going to take that off so you can see this better. And you're going to hold the hand wheel with your left hand like this, and then you're going to turn the smaller knob, so you're holding it still, turn the smaller knob towards you with your right hand. If it's too hard to turn, you can ask someone stronger to loosen it if, it, if you need to. This release knob wheel is attached to this bobbin winder. It makes it so that the needle does not go up and down. We will use this in a later video. To tighten this release knob, you're going to turn it towards the back in the same way. Now let's look at the left side of the machine. This is the light switch. If I turn off the light, my machine will still go if I push on the foot control. If the light's turned off, it does not mean the machine is turned off. There is no on and off switch on this machine. 
To turn the machine off, you need to unplug it. This is the thread cutter. It's on the bed of the machine behind the needle. So to cut a thread, you're going to take the thread in both hands and you're just going to pull it through there and it cuts your thread off. This knob on the front of your machine is the sewing darning knob. You may hear me call it the drop feed dog knob. Remember that the feed dog looks like little teeth under the needle. Sometimes we just call it the feed. It works with the presser foot to push the fabric through the machine. The photo on the left shows the feed dog up and working to push the fabric through the machine. The photo on the right shows the feed dog drop down. It won't push the fabric through the machine. This photo shows two symbols. The red arrow on the left shows the symbol for regular sewing. The feed dog is up and working. The symbol looks like straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. The green arrow on the right points to the symbol for darning or dropping the feed dog. This symbol means the fabric won't feed through the machine. When the knob points to the left, the fabric will not feed through the machine. To sew, this knob needs to point to the right to the symbol that shows a straight line of stitching and a zigzag stitch. If your sewing machine is not feeding correctly, check the sewing and darning knob. For your homework, you need to show your teacher, parent, or mentor that you understand and can do the following things. You can pause the video or take a photo of the homework. 1. Plug the power cord unit in. Plug in the cord to the foot control. 2. Turn the hand wheel back and forth and see the needle go up and down. Tell your mentor which way to turn the hand wheel if you are using your hand instead of the foot control. 3. Lower and raise the presser foot lifter a few times by putting your right hand through the throat of the machine. 4. Loosen the hand wheel release knob and tighten it. If it is too hard for you, explain how to do it to your teacher as he or she does it. 5. Turn the light off and on. Explain how to turn off your machine. That's a trick question. 6. Cut a thread with the thread cutter. 7. Make the darning sewing knob the feed dog drop. Point to the sewing position. 8. If you have a slide on table, figure out how to put it on. In our next video, we will learn more about presser feet and how to use your hands to sew. See you next time. Here's a note to the mentor. Become familiar with the different buttons on your student's machine. Help them find a manual and look at the pages that show the parts of the machine. If there is no manual, print out the worksheets in the link below the video or make a photo or rough drawing of the machine and label the parts we talked about today.